So we're here with the man, the myth, the legend, Jason Warner, uh, manager of the desktop team at Canonical. Um, introduce, uh, introduce yourself a little bit. Sure. Um, I'm Jason Warren. As you said, I'm the Ubuntu desktop manager. I manage the team that's generally responsible for what everyone considers to be the Ubuntu release. So they're the ones that kind of turn the crank. They handle GNOME updates, things like that. So core system libraries. Okay. So if I'm using Ubuntu as a desktop, you're really where the buck stops, huh? Essentially, that's yes, my product. Okay. At the end of the day. So one of the biggest um, themes that we've been having in Ubuntu for the last few releases is quality and the quality of the experience for Ubuntu users. Um, so what's the desktop team doing in this regard to ensure that users have a rock solid desktop? There's quite a few things we're doing in, in quality. Quality is obviously something that we want to hang our hats on in the future. And uh, so we're taking a short view and a long view at the same time. So there's many things we want to do over the course of a couple of uh, several releases to get, put things in place. But in the short term, we actually want to do things as well. So we're putting a lot of automated testing in place, a lot of upstream testing. We have um, our QA side is actually dedicated people to work upstream with various upstream projects, GNOME, for instance, and mm -hmm. put automated testing in place. We do daily testing. We do daily ISO testing, daily tip testing on all of our projects. Mm -hmm. And we have um, elements of performance testing that we are putting in. We're obviously going to augment that over time, mm -hmm. but it's something that we we're very happy with the progress we've made and really excited about what we're going to do in the next couple of releases as well. Mm. So why is automated testing good? As, as, as an end user, I'm used to kind of something bad happens. I file a bug, and then it gets put in this big pile. How does automated testing help? Well, there's a lot of different reasons, but at a macro level, the easiest way for me to explain it is that we're, it frees us up to do other things. Okay. So if you think about it one way, we could have several people looking at bugs, tr testing for bugs or, or things of that nature, or we could have people fixing bugs. The more t that we automate up front, the more confidence we have that things don't break and we mm -hmm. don't have to look for them in, in the future. So it builds a, what we call a safety net. It just has um, we have a general feel that everything is working and we can dedicate time to go fix other bugs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people always say there's so many bugs in Launchpad, so many of this. They build up over time. We need to clean it out. Okay. So instead of people sitting there just flipping things in Launchpad, they'll actually be able to just concentrate on resolving the issues. And yeah, stuff. among other things, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, one of the most excited things this UDS, uh, I remember a year ago when you had started with the company and there were rumors of Valve. Steam on Linux someday, and I remember saying, when, someday this might happen, and here we are, it's a year later, there was a Valve logo right next to an Ubuntu logo at a UDS. Um, your team is tasked with the desktop experience, so there's like a lot hanging on the line here. <laughs> so talk a little bit how you guys have been working with, uh, sure. with Valve to make this awesome. So we have a couple people on the desktop team specifically actually working with Valve on a daily basis, and the Unity 3D folk as well who are here, Unity okay. Technologies. Um, game, obviously everyone loves gaming and right. gaming on the desktop and we talked about it as right. some points of validation it's just so when you say Unity 3D the desktop or the game engine? The game engine Unity okay. Technologies Okay. and so the, again it's just another, another point of validation we have two huge gaming companies that want to work with us mm -hmm. so we are engaging with them to help them res actively resolve issues we're looking at it as a partnership so we have um, someone on our X side and who's helping Valve and talking to them in resolving driver issues. Mm. We've got them talking about how we can get um, drivers to the users in a much cleaner fashion or an easier for them to do, to, in an easier way so that we don't have to worry about incompatibilities and things like that. So it's, it's, a, it's an exciting time because they have a very specific set of requirements and so it pushes us to do certain things and to, to think about things a little differently. So it's been, I think it's been beneficial both ways. Mm. And then overall, even if you're not a gamer, this will improve the quality of drivers in general. Oh, absolutely. And and like just that. our relationship with the upstream driver companies at this point has gotten, I think, a lot stronger. Uh -huh. So, so. Um, one of the most popular sessions I see being talked about is the file manager session. <laughs> um, so there was Nautilus, and then now there's a bunch of forks of Nautilus, and people are wondering, what, what's Ubuntu doing in this space? Are we still going to ship stock? Uh, upstream Nautilus, have we been looking at alternatives? What's what's the deal there with Nautilus? Sure. So so Nautilus is an interesting situation. File manager generally is an uninteresting problem. It's, it's right. almost like a solved problem in some ways. But yeah, at the same time, a lot of people like to, to work on it in various ways. They've, everyone has opinions on this. From our perspective, we want something rock solid. We don't want something that's going to um, 
die. We don't want something that's going to maybe become a, um, an end of life project some, somewhere. So it's got to have some longevity to the project. So it's got to show that this project has legs. At this point, the only one that we feel is, is that is still Nautilus. Mm -hmm. And we've taken a different decision though in this, in this cycle. Usually we would go to the latest GNOME release. Mm -hmm. We're being a little bit pragmatic and we're going to hold back to the stable GNOME release. And that is also going to include uh, Nautilus. Although I say that, it's caveated that we may cherry pick, mm -hmm. but we are going to actively work to make Nautilus integrate with the desktop. There are some issues with um, the way Nautilus worked with Ubuntu because of the HUD integration and things like that. So we will be patching those this cycle. Okay. But we're going to stick with Nautilus. Okay. And as far as, um, so how does this relate? You mentioned shipping a stable GNOME and things like that. So how does this do work with things like the control center, for example? I know there were some concerns about we, we wanted to add applets, but upstream was removing the ability to add applets or something like that. So at this so point, like I said, we're going to stay on the stable GNOME, and we're going to continue to do what we did last cycle in that regard. Okay. There's more talk of the long view mm -hmm. for 3.8, 3.10, and um, next UDS will really dig in there. But for this 13.04 release, we'll stay on the stable. We'll probably cherry pick some patches, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. We may go to... Um, GTK 3.8, we, we don't know at this point. We have to wait and see okay. how that's going to work out. So it's unfortunate we can't make a decision here, mm -hmm. but what we took is the decision to be pragmatic. Mm. So one of the bummers that uh, I've seen people complain a lot is the state of Chromium, the browser in Ubuntu over the past few releases has been um, you know, up to two major releases behind. And I was glad to hear that uh, uh, we now have a full-time Chromium maintainer. So can you kind of talk about that story for a little bit? Sure. Um, yeah, Chromium um, was a pain point for a little while. It's, it's uh, Everyone complained about it. We lost the community member who was doing it. Mm -hmm. We tried to pick up um, a lot of the maintenance on the desktop team, but it, was, it, was, it wasn't working. We were actively hiring for a long time, and it took us a long time to fill this position. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy to say we found someone who was enthusiastic and eager about mm -hmm. Chromium WebKit in general. Um, uh, and so now I think our browser story is actually pretty strong mm -hmm. on the desktop. We've got Firefox. We've got, we're going to have the latest Chromium, just as everyone else has. Right. You can always get Chrome from um, from Google, obviously. And right. so there's uh, nothing that lags at this point. So we are going to be up to date. Everyone should have the latest Chromium. And then with our web apps integration to Chromium and Firefox, it's even better. Okay, excellent. And to finish it off, one last question. Ubuntu desktop on the Nexus 7. Tell us about it. So that was obviously, aside from Valve, the, I, I don't know which one was bigger, <laughs> this UDS, Valve or the, Ubuntu on the Nexus 7. Uh -huh. But we're going to be very specific. Mm -hmm. Ubuntu desktop running on the Nexus 7. It's not any tablet edition. This is just, we had to pick some reference hardware. Mm -hmm. So we picked the Nexus 7. It's a relatively open, cheap and, uh, tablet for us to use. And we want to profile. We want to squash down the Ubuntu image mm -hmm. to make it fly on this reference hardware. Mm -hmm. And things that we will do that would benefit Ubuntu Core, Ubuntu Desktop running mm -hmm. on the Nexus will generally help Ubuntu Desktop running everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's all good stuff that we would profile. Memory, power consumption, um, boot speed, um, app opening, closing, wake-ups, sleeps, right. all that so stuff. So even if I have a traditional laptop, you guys working on getting this on the 7 will help trim down the memory a little bit, make Unity a little bit more lightweight, less memory consumption. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so that's the last of the questions. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I just want to say that this is one of the most exciting UDS that I've been to. Val, yeah. talking about the Nexus, all the all this good stuff. It's been a really good UDS. Okay. All right. Thank you for um, talking to us.